This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Washione. You uh, had a couple of different ideas for what we could be talking about today. And one of them is the uh, heady topic of mental equivalence, which is a notion that shows up from time to time in the New Thought teaching. And I think you started out by saying, you know, sometimes you're just having one of those days. Yeah. And when you when I we talked about what we were going to talk about and you said those two are related, I thought, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's go so, that way. Yeah. Let's start with the easy one when you're having one of those days. So talk about your experience and for yourself or for other people around you for when it's just one of those days. Maybe it feels like it's just one of those another one of those other days that that you have. Um, everybody needs something right now and five things need to be done. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's a problem and it's beyond your control. Number three, <laughs> there's another <laughs> problem that's beyond your control and you start to feel helpless or um, more formally, let's say, uh, you want something, you really want it but it's just out of reach. You just can't manifest this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing after another, after another. Yes. And it's just, and, and you fix one and there's two more. Yes. Yep. Yep. And sometimes that happens. And there is, of course, the tendency uh, to blame ourselves. Actually, there's a tendency to blame somebody. You know, somebody out there is trying to get me. You know, when you look up to the sky, God is trying to get me. God, some, something is punishing me for some reason. I'm having one of those days and nothing's working and none of the pieces are fitting together. And, you know, I'm headed out of the house and I'm running behind schedule. And then the first thing that happens is there's a road crew working on my street and I can't even get out the driveway. And then I get to the end of the street and instead of making a left turn like I always do, I have to make a right turn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just goes on and on with the, the pieces not fitting together in the harmonious way that we would like them to and having it all seem to happen the same day. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Pretty exactly one point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, there's just one thing after another, one of mm -hmm. those days. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it's really annoying when that happens. So I'm not going to take anything away from the experience of having one of those days. And I have had one of those days. I've, I woke up early this morning with lots of thoughts going through my mind. It's like, where did you come from and why can't you go back to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> and it was yeah. 4, 4.30 in the morning and it was, it was one of those <coughs> days starting really early. And there was really no need for it, but that doesn't matter because there it was. And <clears throat> when one of those days happens... The reason that it happens is because it can. Now, not every day is going to be the same. Some days are going to be wonderful where everything fits together. It's like we're, we are in completely in sync with everything. And no matter how much we seem to be screwing up, things are fitting together perfectly for us. And it's not one of those days. It's one of those other days. And those are wonderful. And especially when we notice that it's happening. Oh, my God, this is, everything is working really well. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there are times when the things just don't seem to be fitting together well at all. Mm -hmm. And there's a range there. There's a range from one of those great 
fully synchronized days to one of those, oh my God, I can't get out of my own way days. And that's the range that's set. And if we never have one of those days, then it's because they're not possible. Do we have to wallow in them? No. Does it have to last all day? No. It's just, that's the range of experience that we're having. And we get to experience both ends of the range. And a lot of times, most of the time, we're sitting in the middle someplace. Okay. So we're, that leaves us kind of like things happen and you just have to flow with it. Do you try to alter it? Absolutely. You know, just Or I guess the one thing you don't stress over it, but that's the, that's one of those things that's, you know, begging for their spot. I want to throw you off and worry you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a great story yesterday from, uh, this is a prayer work story from one of our congregants who uh, had to get on the train from Philadelphia to New York. And it was an 802 train and running a little behind schedule and taking the Uber and the Uber driver is enlisted in getting to the station on time. And there's prayer going on in the, in the, in the passenger seat in the Uber. And she is setting the intention to get there on time and have all the pieces fit together. I think the train was scheduled to leave at 8.02, and the mapping application kept on showing somewhere between 7.59 and 8.07. Mm -hmm. And they wound up getting to 30th Street Station at 8.03. And she ran inside, and the train was 10 minutes late. <laughs> so she had plenty of time. <laughs> she was late, the train was later, everything was fine. Who would think to pray that their train is going to be late? Say that again. Am, if, if I'm running behind schedule, am I going to pray for my train to be late so it's there when I get there late? No, we usually don't think of that. Okay, so... We usually uh, think, oh, the, you know, the, 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 the traffic is going to part, like the Red Sea... Uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to get there you, on time. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going at first. I thought, was it me? Because that is exactly what I would want. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is both of those are an okay outcome. The idea is to be at the station, ready to get on the train, when the train is ready for me to get on, and then to proceed happily to my next joyous destination. And if that happens by me waking up 10 minutes earlier and being in the car on time or the traffic lights all conspiring to get me there faster than it was supposed to happen or the train being 10 minutes behind schedule, it's all, it's all the same. It's all the same? It is us getting on the train at mm -hmm. the appropriate moment for the train to take us where we're going to go. Okay. Nobody missed the train. Were people inconvenienced because the train was 10 minutes behind schedule? Maybe. Did it get into New York late? I don't know. Maybe they made up the 10 minutes. I don't know. Am I going to in set an intention to inconvenience the hundreds of people who are on that train so that I can sleep in? No. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to set the intention for all the pieces to be fitting together in a way that is perfect and uplifting and harmonious and smooth for everybody involved. Okay. So the mental equivalent in such a situation is to demonstrate what you just described. Right. And in that's terms the, the mental equivalent is knowing in our minds what the possibility is that we wish to see in the world around us. And sometimes we're very specific with our mental equivalents. And other times we get to be intentionally vague. Like if the intention is for my Uber to get to the train station by 8.01, then I can get to the train station at 8.02 and have failed and still get on the train, which is what I really wanted. So let us broaden it out. Not I want to be at the train station at this particular time, but I want to be at the train station in, the, in perfect time to get on the train. So that that feels a lot like, um, let's see, setting an intention. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the 
the, the mental space of setting your intention as being mental equivalent to a situation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if this new experience were unfolding in my life and all of these pieces were fitting together, what might that look like and how would I feel? And that creates the mental equivalent. And if we're looking at a situation saying it can't possibly work, our mental equivalent is one of impossibility. And what we're doing is we are negating the possibility that this is going to happen. If there's a thought that it has to happen because my Uber driver is going to, is going to drive dangerously <laughs> in order for me <laughs> to get to the station by a particular time on the clock, then I'm using a mental equivalent that, first of all, isn't for what I really want. And second of all, might be working at cross purposes because the Uber driver might drive dangerously and have something bad happen, in which case I'm getting the result of my mental equivalent, even though that's not what I really wanted. That's, that's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what about when you want something, a, a new position uh, in your, in your job, your career? or a different financial portfolio? Mm -hmm. What about when there are almost, not, I don't know, goals you could write down mm -hmm. and you can, you know, visualize them to, to whatever extent. What, how do you adjust your mental equivalent to that? Uh, Does it have to be something that you've seen close to it? Because it's hard for people to imagine beyond that which they've seen, they haven't seen. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, let's say there's somebody who's working for in, in corporate America and they're seeing where they are in the pecking order and they're, you know, somewhere in middle management and they decide that what I really want to do, um, you know, I'm looking at Paul over there and he's an executive vice president and I think Paul's got a pretty cush life and I, uh, a, a job that I would find very easy to do and a nice expense account and, you know, the office over there on, on the east side of the building or whatever. So I can then decide, well, I want to be an executive vice president. Mm -hmm. And wrapped into that are a bunch of assumptions. First of all, that I'm going to like being an executive vice president. Uh, second of all, that being, having the job of executive vice president is actually going to use my skills and let me spend my time doing things that I find to be valuable and uplifting and that it actually pays as much as I thought it was going to pay <laughs> and that the strings attached to the expense account are not such that I really can't use it for anything that I'd really want to use it for and all those little things. So what we do is we say, ah, there's a job. I want that job. And we set the intention for that job and we completely lose fact or track of why. We want that job. So the mental equivalent that we want to create is once I have that, what's that going to mean for me? What I really want is a job that pays me well, that uses my skill sets in a way that is satisfying for me and uh, enriching for the company. And I want to be working with people who uh, I enjoy spending time with and who support me and my mission and who I can be enthusiastic about supporting. And I want to feel joyous when I go into work. I want to know that I'm accomplishing something worthwhile and that I am on a team that's making a difference. And whatever else it is that fits into that mental equivalent, you know, I'm, what I really want to do is be a circus clown. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not about putting on grease paint. It's about being able to do those things that the clown does to get the reaction that the clown gets to have that satisfaction of doing that particular job. And so the mental equivalent is how do I want to feel? What is, what's the totality of that experience once I'm having it? Because the specifications, my perfect job might be executive vice president or my perfect job might be circus clown but I don't want to mix them up. And I really want to understand what's going to leave me feeling fed. So to, to kind of orchestrate your feelings, you know, you kind of, are you saying, imagine yourself 
as the corporate vice president in the office that you described? Is that what you mean? Yeah, that'll help. And and not even to imagine being the executive vice president. But when I say when I when I want to imagine myself being the executive vice president, what is it that I like about that? What is it that's mm-hmm. that's intriguing and uplifting about that? Because that's what I want to set the intention for. Not to have the title, not to have the the office. Not, uh, not but to have wait. the role. What if the person wants the title? Well, you might say why, because you were in corporate America. I might say the same thing for the same reason, but some those kind of things are important to people. Mm-hmm. And if I get all of the goodies that I would get as the executive vice president, and it doesn't include the, the title executive vice president, is that okay? I suppose it's okay for the person that it's important to. Okay. Um the title has a meaning Mm -hmm. and what we're looking for is not the title is the meaning behind the title. And as long as we're okay with the meaning that we're giving to the title, then if it shows up with the title, that's great. That's great. Because if, if the job description that I'm actually looking to fulfill, if my mission is to serve in this particular way and the way everybody, every company that I'm talking to defines that is executive vice president, then there's complete harmony. And it might be that the company that I want to work for is a research company. They don't have executive vice presidents, but they have somebody else who does exactly those sorts of things. Or I want to be working for a hospital system and they don't have executive vice presidents. Or I want to be working in geology and there's no executive vice presidents, but the role still exists. Can I go into a field that's different than the one that I identified that label in? and still do my work and share my gifts and be that resource, even though that title doesn't exist. I, I see your point. I really do. Yeah. I, I just, I'm thinking of uh, people that are in corporate America or that type of structure, and they really want to be in a certain position. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for reasons that they don't really, you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that aren't realistic at all. Oh, my. But still want it, you know. And I think you can lay out all the things that seem to have a little bit of value judgment next to them. Mm-hmm. You know, that you're going to do this, which is more valuable to in this scenario or column B, column A, column B. But there are some people that are legitimately legitimately in the situation where it's vice president and all the perks that are right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. All those perks plus, that's what they want. Yeah. Let's take a break and then we will come and continue with a discussion of what happens if you didn't really want that after all. <laughs> It's Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand. That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at bethelight.com. That's b-the-light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at bethelight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're having a wonderful uh, conversation about mental equivalence. and also mm. having one of those days. Mm. And we were kind of wrapped around the axle on the idea of somebody, for example, who's in corporate America, and they identify that 
the position that they'd really like is executive vice president. And this is just pulled out of a hat. And there are a lot of cases, especially in corporate America, where somebody is, for example, in sales and they're excellent in sales and being really good in sales. When they get a promotion, they become a sales manager. And if they're, if they can do that, then they get moved up farther in the sales pipeline. And unfortunately, one of the things that happens in there somewhere is that they stop getting to do sales. Instead of doing sales, they're coaching other salespeople to do sales instead, and they are not able to practice what was fulfilling them in the first place, even though they're moving their way up the corporate ladder and they're getting into a, quote, better position. It's important to be really clear that if, if, if I'm in the sales biz, then moving up to the top of the sales chain and into the executive VP for sales is going to be a good thing for me, even though it means that I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of sales directly because there's other people taking care of that. And there are some people who just love management and they're really good at it. And there are other people who just really want to be able to do what they do <laughs> and don't want to be distracted or bothered by somebody else who needs help to solve a problem that they know how to solve and would rather be solving themselves. That's a, that's a bit of work, you know, and I think I understand. I think we're on two different ideas. At least I think I am. Could be. It's, it's people that, or situations where you're in visual visualization classes or something, you know, like that. And, mm -hmm. The person is talking about something that they want that are that's maybe um, a couple hundred grand beyond <laughs> 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 what might be might seem to be realistic. So what is the mental equivalent in that regard? Because I'm I do a lot of reading, obviously, and if you mm -hmm. don't pay attention it kind of suggests that you, if you adjust your attitude and everything, energy and thoughts and blah, 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 at the level or in the realm of that which you want, that's the mental equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some nuances in there. And I think we were hanging around the nuances, it felt. Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you talked about fit, what might fit. Yep. Yeah, you got to do a little homework, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it all comes down to belief. If I want to be making a hundred or $200,000 more than I'm making now, and I have a belief that nobody in my family has ever made near that much money, I have no possible track record that's going to lead me to making that much money. So it's a pipe dream, but that's what I want to make, and that's the number that I'm writing down, and that's what's going to go onto my vision board. It's probably going to work out that I'm going to continue earning what I believe I deserve rather than what I say I want. So now why would that be? Because it is done as you believe. Okay. If somebody believes that they're a $90,000 a year employee and they, they're, they're going for 300,000, the belief is 90. And even if they get an offer for a $300,000 a year job, something will happen and they will wind up back at 90. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was part of the movement <laughs> that I was trying to get to. It, you have to adjust to, um, I'm just going to say the dream or the vision, yeah. you know, of it. And it's not to say that it's wrong to want it. I have no, you know, I don't care who wants a corner office. I mean, if you like that, good. Um, I kind of think if I was still back there in those days, I think I would have kind of looked for that corner office too. But I'm saying that is, do you have the mental equivalent of the person who sits behind the chair in the desk in that office right? or the X number of dollars that you, one is hoping and you said they'll, you know, come back down how do you handle the mental equivalent? What, how do you get yourself to the mental equivalent of that which you want? 
there's actually a wonderful process for doing that. That's part of the practical prayer. So that's the practical prayer is generally five steps when it's working smoothly. We, in the first step, we turn our awareness to the infinite creative power that creates everything. In the second step, we realize that since it's created everything, it created me. So I am part of that infinite creative power. And then we make a demand. We say our realization, our affirmation step where we're claiming our good. I have my wonderful executive vice president job with a corner office view from the 14th floor and making $300,000 a year and uh, living the high life. And then the next step normally would be to go into gratitude. I'm so thankful for this good that's already unfolding. And then we release. And so it is. And what tends to happen after we've done that affirmation about the $300,000 a year EVP job with the 14th floor window office, this little voice says, yeah, but you've never had anything nearly that good in your life. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, but you don't deserve it. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, but anything. Mm -hmm. And that is the indication that what we are claiming and what we're believing is different. We have just claimed a mental equivalent, and that little voice is telling us, that is not my mental equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a, yes, that's, yes. A, that's a word salad that seems to fit what, what we want, but we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where we get to go back and say, what's making, where's the difference in this? Why is it that what I'm, what I'm desiring and what I'm believing I can have are different? So we're going to go through and the, the, the next step in the process is to claim that that false belief that we don't deserve it, that we can't have it doesn't exist. There's no power to that. That's an illusion. That's a shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, all the good that's available everywhere, anywhere is available everywhere and it's available to me. So I'm claiming this good right now of my wonderful EVP job, 300 K, 14th floor corner office. And then see if the little voice comes back again and says, yeah, but you're not the sort of person who could ever have that sort of success. And if there's something that's going on in our consciousness, that's keeping us at a distance from whatever good that we're claiming, that's real. What we are creating in our life is not what we are saying in our realization, or our affirmation step. What we're creating in our life is what we're agreeing to and believing. Mm -hmm. So the exercise then is to go through what is it about the EVP job and the 300,000 a year and the 14th floor corner office that's important to me? And what is it that I don't believe is okay for me? Mm -hmm. Could I do that same sort of job from uh, a window office, but not the corner for $200,000 a year? Could I do the same sort of wonderful, rich, uplifting work from a cubicle for 180 <laughs> and get myself to the point where I'm understanding what do I believe could be mine now? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's all a moving target because if I move myself from being in the bullpen to having, you know, a, a, a bigger cubicle <laughs> and a raise and some additional duties, that will help me to understand that I, I do believe that this good is mine. And I do believe that I'm sharing my skills and talents and gifts in a way that's uplifting to my employers and to my colleagues. And then we get to take another step. So we can step from wherever we were to 125 to 175 to 200, and then eventually maybe get up to 300,000 and clear out those false beliefs that I don't deserve it, that I couldn't have it, that uh, I'm not worth it. So maybe it's not one step from here to there. Maybe yeah. there's, maybe it's going to be incremental. So, um, so important. You don't hear about, I, you know, I call those the bullet points, the things that you need to examine about the situation and about yourself to mm -hmm. see if there's a, if there's a match. And I think one important thing to know is that it's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. It can, you can adjust it either way which is what you were explaining, who wants to adjust down or expects to. And I think that was the place that I was entering into this talk with us. Adjusting down, it could be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Adjusting up is more difficult, and that's the desired way to go. So... <laughs> I'm, no, no, wait. I'm not saying the whole desired way. I'm saying that's the, you know, people want to go that way. Not that they should, or, you know, you may be, as you said, comfortable with 
whatever job and everything is okay. But so many aren't. Mm -hmm. And going for the the goal, so to speak, hmm, there's that all of those things that you mentioned that can't be overlooked. You know, so you gotta start your so your search. And I almost said therapy. Your <laughs> 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 therapy on yourself. Um to to I think to understand it, to see it work a couple of times. There was an experience I had way back before I learned any of this practical prayer, new thought stuff. I was working in radio. I was in my late twenties. Uh, I was living in Philadelphia. Um, I was out of work and I wanted to do a morning show on a top mm. 40 radio station. And that's really what I wanted to do. And I was engaged and I got a job offer. And it, this, and pff, you know, that's exactly what I did a top 40 radio station in Charleston, South Carolina. And it was set up so that I started uh, three days after I got married mm. <laughs> with my new family back in Philadelphia. And it turns out that Charleston, South Carolina is a very, very pretty city, but it was not the right place for me. And it was one of those, oh my God, I got exactly what I asked for and it's nothing like what I want. Wow. Yeah. Lasted six months. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only reason I moved to South Florida because I had to get myself out of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then it took 10 years to get myself back to Philadelphia. So you're saying that the mental equivalent that you have is... What I said I wanted, I, I got everything that was in my spec sheet. Here. And it was awful. No, when I, when, when I got the job offer in South Carolina... Okay. And as bad as it was having to move three days or two days after the wedding. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, that's, but that's what you wanted to do. I, that's that what I said I wanted to do. That's not the experience I wanted to have. Okay. I did not want to be by myself alone for six weeks after I got married before the family was able to move down to South Carolina. I did not want to be on the road and away from family for 10 years. That's not what I wanted, but that was what I said I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> those are the, you know, those are the hidden things. How did you, how would you know that in 10 years or five years, you're going to not want to do this? You don't know. I, I actually, I did know because I, I got the offer and I said, no, I can't do this. And everybody said, this is exactly what you've been saying that you want to do. You need to do this. You know, my mom, <laughs> my at the time fiance, they all, they all looked at the, at the blueprint and they said, this is what you've been, this is what you've been asking for. You've, you got a job offer and this is what you want to do to go do a top 40 show and a, you know, on your own. And if I had had a name for it, then I would have called it the still small voice. The still small voice mm -hmm. was saying, don't. Do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> and I did it. So, okay. I, I think I'm thinking that your mental equivalent was energized by everything on that list. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got. My mental equivalent was to get the things uh, I was looking at, at it very superficially. And These that's are the what you specifications got. That, and that's what I got. And I wasn't looking at it. This is the success that I want to have. This is the happiness that I want to have. This is the longevity. This is the experience and tone and flavor of life that I want to have. I think I'm Which, coming into this thinking that's got to be a part of the package. Like I'm not going to do anything about wishing unless I'm checked, you know, to see. How, once I have that executive, I'm doubling back to that one. Once I have that EVP job, how's it going to feel? Okay. Yeah, you know. ahead of time. Well, just to know, yeah. What is, yeah. what is, you know, instead of just, oh, this is the dream, this is the goal. I, you know, I want to be a, a, a I want to be a kicker for an NFL team. And that's all great. 
until <laughs> until there's a dozen heavy guys running at you trying to kill you before you can kick the ball. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> so <laughs> you this, got, this is different than I thought. <laughs> you got to do your work on the dream, right? Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. You, whatever it is, you got to do a little bit of, you know, investigating to see if it has everything you want. Understand what it is that you really want, what you're mm-hmm. really looking for. Not just the specs, not just the description, not just the title. How do you want it to feel? What Mm -hmm. do you want that to to be like in in your felt reality? And then set the intention for that. And if it turns out to come along and it's labeled as executive vice president, great. And if it turns out that it's labeled something else and you get the same feeling, then it turns out that executive vice president didn't mean that much to begin with. Mm Mm-hmm. You, you find it so, you know, yeah. as, as you go forward. It's, it's really hard to convince uh, people sometimes that what they're seeing isn't the thing that's been the, the dream of a lifetime and would have saved, you know, changed their life forever. And you're suggesting a little bit more work on that vision or that picture that you see in front of you, yeah. that hope and desire, because it may not be everything. And then, but if it is, then, okay, then yeah. what's the mental equivalent? How do you reach that mental equivalent? Yeah. So How do so, I embody the good that I want to experience instead of having somebody hand it to me or put my name on the door? What does mm-hmm. it feel like that to be that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a break. And when we continue, we will do a prayer on having all those pieces fit together. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b the light Dot com. That's b the lightcom Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We've been talking about the mental equivalent. Yeah. And what happens when we're having one of those days? Mm. We're having one of those days, the mental equivalent is one of confusion and distraction and um, uh, disharmony. And it happens from time to time. And when that happens, we are free to say, okay, that's what my experience has been today up until now. And I'm going to claim that those pieces are going, are now starting to fit together in a way that is more comfortable and harmonious and okay, as far as I'm concerned. And we can do that. And sometimes the ship turns right around and sometimes it takes a while for it to come around, but it comes around. So we're going to do a prayer now because we've been talking about mental equivalence and our desires. And what we're really looking for is harmony between the goal that we have identified and the experience that we'll be having once we get there. And that's the two sides of the coin of desire. On the one hand, I want to have the title. I want to have the prestige, the position, the pay, the uh, notoriety, the fame, the success. And on the other hand, there's how I want to feel, how I want my life to unfold once I have that. So we don't have to choose one or the other, but we need to be very clear that when we're identifying the desire that we have, it's not based on a specification or an assumption that once I have this, I'll also have that. Some people want to be rich and famous. And I understand why you want to be rich. 
And I sometimes ask, okay, well, why do you want to be famous? And very quickly, the response turns around to the things that you get for being famous mostly include things that you get when you're rich. <laughs> so if you want to be rich and famous, that's fine. But understand what the feeling is of that. Famous people are always looking for who's watching because they don't necessarily want somebody to get a picture of them for the tabloids where they, you know, they went out of the house in their bathroom <laughs> or whatever. Having to dress up so that you can go out and get the newspaper it doesn't seem like the sort of thing that people who want to be famous are thinking about. And as long as you're okay with that, about having people with cameras all the time and they're looking to glom onto the fame, that's okay. And there are people who are famous and they love it, and that's great. And the important thing to do is to not make an assumption that the goal that we have and the experience that we're gonna have once we reach the goal are gonna be the same. So let's do a prayer. We can turn away from the details in the world around us to, and be aware of the idea of what it is that we desire, what it is that we'd like to experience next. And that could be in the next moment, that could be in the next week or month or the next phase of our lives. And as we identify that goal, that description of the experience that we are wanting to be having, let's dive in even deeper, understanding what that feels like. Once I have this new experience, how am I feeling? What am I doing? Who am I with? How am I spending my time? What is it that this goodness means to me? Are there challenges and demands in this situation that I'm willing to deal with? Are there challenges in the situation that I'm not willing to, willing to deal with? What is it that makes my heart sing? When I have this goodness, how does it feel? And then as we open our awareness to that infinite creative power, that divine presence, that one love that shares itself as all of its creation, and know that that one is sharing itself right here, right now, as me, as everyone within the sound of my voice. That next experience of good, of fulfillment, of uplift, of satisfaction, of happiness and harmony and prosperity, of wellness and joy and peace of mind is available. And it's not one size fits all. It is individual for each of us. That feeling of uplift that we have once we get the label, once we get the position, once we get the role, once we have what we've defined as success. The important part is the feeling. And as we open ourselves to the fulfillment of that feeling, to the realization of that good coming into our lives, a conspiracy begins as the universe finds all sorts of ways to bring the pieces together in a way that might look exactly like we had described it and might look completely different. And still that satisfaction, that uplift, that prosperity, that wellness, that well-being, that peace of mind is ours because regardless of how close or far it is from what we thought the story was going to look like, when we're having that feeling, it's good and love and harmony unfolding. And that's what's happening right now for each of us in our own way. And there's nothing that stands in the way of it. As we open to our goodness, as we let down our assumptions, our preconceived notions, good and more good and more good is filling us. I'm grateful for it. So, so grateful for the good that's coming about, for the awareness of the process, and for the willingness of each one to take part in the process, to identify and open to and allow and invite and step into that good. And so with this deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word and I release it into that creative law that creates everything. And I know it's now creating this. And so I let it be. And so it is. Thank you. 
The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.